Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the EMD GP35 from Broadway Limited. This is a Paragon 4 locomotive with the Rolling Thunder where you can have a wireless subwoofer hooked up to it for that trackside base experience as they've been doing since Paragon 3. Let's see what you get in the box in both the UP and BNSF versions starting now. Okay, so we're going to lift the lid on the BNSF. I will spare the UP details for after the unboxing. You have a nice manual in here. They've switched to this white kind of layout for both the box and the manual. 27 pages of functions. There's also CVs in here, maintenance and more. There's also a separate printout for the specific BNSF it looks like. Inside the BNSF locomotive here and one major spotting feature on this that you'll be able to see very pronounced is not the foam but is the air conditioner units on the cab roof. So can see that looks like they've added some packaging and definitely protecting those handrails but we'll get this out and take a closer look after we get all the handrail protection out okay let's take a look at this locomotive the GP35 this is a modern BNSF swish scheme again with the air conditioning units those are dual air conditioning units on the roof as you can see there's also an antenna stand with a Sinclair antenna, exhaust, dynamic brake fan, exhaust fan, or I'm sorry, radiator fans. And then the horn is also pronounced up top here. Yellow sill for the reflective post-2006 FRA standards. And we'll swing around to the front and really zoom in here. So on the front, silver tipped end MU hoses. Ditch lights above the anti-climber, a drop step that is fixed in position, and a coupler with magnetic glad hand. There is also a little area here for the brake. There's a separately applied grab on the nose with sand filler hatches, separately applied windshield wipers. As you look on the side, truck and fuel tank detail including emergency shutoff, blower housing, pronounced on the side, BNSF, the Swish logo as I mentioned, separate compartment detail, lift rings on this locomotive as well, and on the rear, more of the same. Now each stair has a white paint on each sill to help the crew see in low visibility situations where the stair is. And then you've got rear ditch lights as well, a rear MU receptacle, accessory hoses, airline hoses, again with silver tipped ends. It appears Broadway Limited is stepping up their game on the diesels because there's a lot of detail on here and it looks pretty good. So even rear windshield wipers on the doors to the cab, sunshades, etc. Let's look in the cab. You do have cab figures on... Just uh, one side here, and more separately applied grabs on the nose. Now we've got the UP version. One of the major spotting features on this is the canvas sunshades. There's those, those light colored sunshades over the windows. Again, more of the same detail. You're going to have different configurations, a lack of ditch lights as compared to the BNSF. And we do have some battery compartment detail, dependable transportation, the road number on the side, UP on the side. You can see that UP yellow and gray. There's also the lift rings that we talked about, a more pronounced, oh, looks like actually the same exhaust. Just trying to see what kind of differences we have here. MU stands on the back, again the lack of ditch lights. 
horn placement is the same. However, the radiator fan grill section is different. There are three fan grills on there, and you can also see see-through fans. No problem, including the dynamic brake fan in the middle. So that is a 360 of the UP version. You can also compare and contrast for your own differences. Obviously, these don't have the cab air conditioners on it or the antenna stand or the Sinclair antenna. This is a earlier version compared to the BNSF. Okay, let's get the weight on these fellas. They are not light, but I'm probably going to have to read it to you because it's hard to see. That is 14.5 ounces, 410 grams. So almost a pound, pretty good for such a short locomotive. Okay, so for Broadway Limited locomotives, a couple ways to start them. You just move them or you hit F9 for extended startup. So we're gonna hit F9. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty good. You hear the engineer poking around, probably going in the compartments, going in the doors, starting up the locomotive, even walking on the ballast there. Now, F0 in this case is the headlight and number boards, as you can see there. One is bell. Two is horn. People often ask for the second horn toggle, so that's F22. I'll go back to the main horn here. So a nice little kind of fouled horn sound there with a little bit of play in it. F3 is uh, the rear light on and off. F4, as mentioned here, has no effect. F5 number boards. Also not uh, showing on this. This is actually showing up as an increased RPM. And that actual handout is for pro mode only, so we'll go back to the manual to look at that because F5 has increased RPM, F6 has decreased RPM. So at least you heard the prime mover get to moving. <laughs> F7 is the ditch lights and Mars lights, which in this case just ditch lights on and off. They are a nice brightness on these. F8 mute, F9 start up and shut down as we already covered, F10 radiator cooling fan. F11, air filling, air release. F12, brake when stopped, brake released when moving. F13 is grade crossing horn. More 
apparently passenger freight. Let me try that again. There we go. Fourteen's uh, passenger announcements. We heard some of that, along with freight and maintenance sounds all through the F-14 through, through F-21 modes, uh, functions. F-22 secondary horn, as we mentioned. F-23 is track sounds. See if we have to move. There you hear the clickety clack of the track sounds. F24 is auxiliary light control, 25 is longhorn, 26 you can play the macro, on 27 you can record it. That's a function we've covered many times on Broadway Limited where you can record a sequence and then play it back. And last but not least, 28 is brake squeal. So those are the functions of this new GP35. Okay, now we have the UP and the BNSF side by side. If you notice when I hit F6, I'm sorry, F7, you've got class lights on the UP, ditch lights on the BNSF. They just happen to be offset here, so. I don't know if it's because I started them up at the same time or what, but we'll get these moving at one speed step. Pretty smooth at one speed step. We'll zoom out here and we're going to go test probably just this outer one. Have to thread the needle here and make sure you don't hit the side of the locomotive or the other one. So one speed step on these is 6.1 scale miles an hour. If you want to slow that down, you're going to need to do so in CVs. Broadways have traditionally ran fast at one speed step, but they're usually smoothed out at least. We're looking at some rear action here. We're up to three speed stops, definitely smoothed out. And they're staying fairly well paced together. So, that tells me you won't have to do much speed matching out of the gate. There's your rear lights, rear ditch lights on the BNSF. Pretty smooth by these points here. Let's go back to one. A little bit of lurch, but overall pretty good. All right, now time for a pull test here. Capping out at about 1.6. 6 ounces, about 25, 30 cars per locomotive is my guess on that. While the UP idles there, we'll take and look at the underside and then check the NMRE standards on the wheels. So we have Engage, engage. So like those are good. And those are good as well. So the NMRA standards are met on the wheels. All right, here we have the coupler test. Checking the NMRA height. Pretty much on point. Maybe a fraction of a hair high. And we're going here, and it looks like we're a little low. So one end's just a fraction of a hair high, the other one is just a fraction of a hair low. That's pretty firm in there, but there you have it. Coupler height test number two, high on that one. 
eye on that one as well. Well, that's going to wrap up our review of the Broadway Limited EMD GP35s, beautiful locomotives. Very smooth. Broadway Limited is upping their game on the diesels. You can tell with the diesel detail on these. Beautiful execution. NMRA compliance was good with the exception of couplers, which is pretty standard. We've got a lot of coupler NMRA compliance issues across models. But these run smooth. They look good. A nice uh, addition for the GP35. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time right here on the channel. Take care.